Okay, I'm with you now. Just just go on. Okay. Um, the word that we deleted yesterday, was it because um, the world is not carrying any food? That was why we deleted it. It's not because of that. I said we took off that load, that world because we just want this to be more economical, just to make it more economical. You can decide to leave the world. It's just to make it more economical. That's why I took off that word. There are cases whereby more economical, more cheaper, cheaper. That's what I mean by economical. Are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I said more cheaper. That's what I mean by economical. Okay, so my second question is this. Where you wanted to draw your where you wanted to draw your uh, axis? You said you said the size of the world is just happening. Yeah. Okay, is the size of the world there? Is it the size of the block? Yes, that's the size of the block. Okay, that's the size of the block. Okay, so Thank you. So my next question is, I noticed that you brought the uh, first floor and made it on the ground floor. Uh -huh. What's the concept behind that? With what are you trying to achieve? Is it the, uh, the balcony so that the balcony can reflect on the foundation? If you had listened to me from the beginning, I said, it's good you get the elevations of the architectural drawing. The elevation okay. will be able to give you a better picture of how the building is like when you are looking at it from the elevation, if possible, the 3D. If you have the okay. 3D, you have a better picture. But in a case where you don't even have that, you can copy the first floor and paste on the ground floor just to see if how the arrangement is like, because from by copying the first floor and pasting on the ground floor, it will help us to know whether you have a cantilever, whether you have a wall that is actually not aligned with each other from the ground and the first floor. We have cases like that, most especially when you are dealing with maybe like duplex. Okay, you discover there are some walls that may on the ground floor, it, the, those walls are not continuing like that. At, they okay. may not be in the same position with the other wall that are in the first floor. So that is, this one will help you to be able to understand the arrangement. I, there is a video on general arrangement I did. I have sent it to you. Maybe you did not watch it. Okay. Okay, or maybe I did not even send it to you. I will check it and send to you. General arrangement okay. is something that is very, very sensitive. You must understand general arrangement. The ground floor and first floor. You can see for this building, almost all the walls are together you know the ground floor they are all aligned with each other they are all aligned so there are cases whereby you are not going to find it like that that is why i use the staircase as a reference that's why i said pick from the staircase area because the staircase will always align with each other the staircase will always align but other walls may not align Yes, but we were lucky. We were lucky. This design, everything aligned. The only thing that was different is that in the first floor you have a cantilever. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Okay, so even if we have like four, five, six story building, it's good we place them on top of each other so that we can see. Exactly, the because you may have difference. Honestly, there must there will definitely you may have difference. In most cases, you even have difference. In most cases, in most cases. But when it comes to shop, you know, most times they do they do everything alike. What you have on the ground floor will most likely be what you have on the second floor, third floor, like that. It continues that way. But it, it's not in all cases. Most especially when it's a residential building. In a residential building, you may have a, a two bedroom flat. Um, maybe it could be two bedroom on the ground floor while at the first floor could be four bedroom. So you can see that it will most likely be bigger. 
maybe yeah. uh, so you have cantilever and then the arrangement of the wall lines may not be in the same uh, uh, line okay so all of that you need to know how you you are going to do your general arrangement so general it boils down to general arrangement general arrangement is wide is deep that is what we call structural arrangement you need to you need to go deep into study that was why i was emphasizing get uh victor yoniga's book i was emphasizing on it get that book or else yeah. you and i will keep going back and forth back and forth because you will most likely not be getting what i'm saying in detail okay yes okay. the knowledge is deep very that's why i said is beyond drawing it's beyond just drawing mm, it's beyond just the drawing is is deep aha yeah. uh -huh. so you need to get that book very I important as soon as possible get it yeah if, I have the book. I okay have the book. fine fine if you have that book study it please study it okay. very well study it very very well go through it from the beginning to the end you will see there is a practical design he did please go through all of that aside that practical design watch uh, study the entire book you are going to see different classes of uh, building uh, with their kind of uh, loadings you are going to see loadings for partition walls and he did a lot of things there so okay. from there he will always even tell you from practical experience use this this is this but from my practical experience if you use this he actually tried to pick nigeria factor and all that to actually come up with his book you know with nigeria we don't have our code of practice and it's an error it's unfortunate actually it's, it's unfortunate if we if we had our own code of practice it would have uh, been a bit a lot more easier for us to do a whole lot of things but we are still using the british standard although you can use uh euro code now anyway so all right okay so another question i have is the trench that we draw that the beginning of the trench the width I, the size of the width is also given to us by the software <laughs> it is you that is specifying the size of the width now this is autocad autocad is a manual design software is not automatic like the way quick civil series protest structure is no 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 you are the size of the trench you are the one to specify if you are the engineer on the you know that start these are standards now it times it's times three the width of the thickness of that block times three so that you have a space working space to lay your blocks so it's always times three times three the size of the block i did that calculation on calculator did you go through it can you hear me yes i can hear uh -huh. you didn't you see when i was punching okay. on calculator i was explaining that now that times two okay. 230 multiplied by three that's how we got 690 okay okay six times okay sir another one i want to ask i want to another one i want to say yes you have the a, a drawing that you have before that you are trying to copy some things into the one into the screen you are teaching me. Please, that uh, pre existing drawing that you have, can you help me? It shouldn't be too big. So I can be seeing the uh, screen you are using to teach me properly. Most times, like, it doesn't really show clearly on my side because you are sharing to screen. <laughs> There's no way I can do this without uh, sharing this screen that's the best way i can teach you no no no. i'm not saying you should not share the screen i'm saying that the screen you are sharing the existing drawing try and make it smaller so that smaller how? so that it can be more mm -hmm. clear I mean, it, you know. it is shared equally now except you want me to move move it like this uh, uh you need to you need to sit down and and uh, watch uh, watch it properly uh, it's not something you can get in one day. That's the honest truth. It takes a lot of practice. You have to keep practicing. You have to, in short, lay your hands on on so many sample uh, designs, uh, drawings, detailed drawings. A lot, so many detailed drawings. It's not something you can get in one day. It takes patience, consistency. Until today, I'm still I'm still learning. Till today, as I speak to you, there are detailing you ask me to do for you. I have to go back and start making research to see other samples in order for me to come up with it. You get till today, and I've been doing it for some years now. 
<laughs> so okay, to, you did, you did civil engineering. Ah, uh, of course. Now, if I did not do civil engineering, where would I learn this from? <laughs> I did civil now. But but you major on design. No, I do supervision. If you have construction for me, I will come and do it now. Okay. Yeah, I do. I do supervision. I do. Now, do you do consultancy and structural design. So I do I do see anyway. <laughs> whether whether it's a design or supervision job or maintenance job, as long as it's construction, um, um we are there. Mm, okay. By the grace of God. Do you do, uh, do, you do map designs? Web. Yeah, okay, mechanical and electrical. Yeah, I do MIE yeah. now. I do mechanical electrical service drawings and uh, uh, only service drawings so you know mechanical electrical they are wide too they are a different profession on its own so just the mechanical and the electrical service drawings on buildings that's the one i do only only uh, yeah because those professions are wide uh, uh, yeah thank you yes sir yeah so uh if that is correct um the the base detail we said this base is 1000 by 1000 okay all you need to do is just to pick one particular base and detail that base Okay, this is one base here. Just detail the base. To detail this base now, all you need is just to insert your reinforcement. You know, you have a cover. The concrete cover you must have specified in your design. Uh, let's, let's say our cover is 25. You must have specified your concrete cover. So you must have specified your concrete cover, then you just put in your reinforcement. Uh, and then this reinforcement is also from the design. It's not, it's not an assume whatever reinforcement I'm putting here is based on what I got from my design. So, so I have to even check the detailed drawing from, from the software and confirm what I have there. All right, so you know that uh, you have your columns position at the center of this. Sorry, my mouse is uh, actually misbehaving right now. So I'm just taking it from the center because I want to place my columns at the center of this base because I have my columns at the center of the base, okay? So all I need to do is just to copy this column from here and I'll pick from the center here and I'll drop it here. I 
I'll match this property, match this property. So this is how this uh, base is like. This is the reinforcement here. We have this reinforcement. We also have this reinforcement, okay? So, um, I always like to, now here I can just match property instead of, uh, so that I can have this, oh God, this is too big. The thickness is too large. It's too thick. I'm going to leave it as it is. I don't have that. Uh, it's too thick. So all I need to do is to call out this reinforcement. Okay, it is called calling out. You can see all these, they are very, very large. It's not drawn to scale, that other one. So, but this one, I'm just trying to draw it to scale. But then instead of going through this entire headache of arranging this all over afresh, if you have an existing drawing, eh, you don't need to start drawing this all over again. All you need is to understand how to interpret this detailing properly. So you must understand how to interpret your detailing properly. Once you understand how to interpret it properly, you make your work much more easier and faster. Okay. So instead of uh, you drafting all of these afresh from scratch, okay, there's no need for that. Uh, there's no need for you drawing all of this from scratch. If you really want to make your work uh, a bit easier and faster, okay. So you have to keep uh, scaling what you already have there in existence. Oh no, this is here. This is the reinforcement I'm calling out. So I'm, I'm just showing you this quickly uh, here. Have to keep making all of this smaller, smaller, smaller. All right. So this is base, and it is called base one. Okay, BT one. That's the one I was using there. From my design is base one. And that is the same name I'm going to give this. All I need to do is just to make all of this a bit smaller because this one. Okay. So what I did here is I'm going to do the same thing here. All right. So this, this do not here is indicating that this reinforcement is spanning from here to this place. But you know, we already have a concrete cover. So it's spanning from here now to this place, okay? While this other one, this other reinforcement is also spanning from here to this place. Now. All you need to do is just to take uh, the measurement of that base. 
okay? Based on the design, check the spacing. So I'm going to go back to my proto detail here. Okay, I think I did not uh, generate the foundation for uh, the foundation detail here. Oh, sorry, it was not generated. Okay, it was not generated. I can remember, I think. Okay, so you check your detailing or what you have specified based on your design. Okay, you, from there, you'll be able to know uh, the size of the reinforcement. You can see uh, if it is Y12, what is the spacing of that reinforcement? If the measurement from here to here now is 1,200, how did I do this mistake? This is supposed to be 1,000. Sorry, I'm going to tamper with this. And I'm going to assume that this is 1,000. I think I made a mistake there. Text edits. So I will assume that this is 1,000. That is, this is not drawn to scale anymore. So uh, 1,000 now divided by 150, 1,000 divided by 150. You punch that in your calculator. You are going to have 6.6. .6. So what you do, you can just approximately change it to seven, okay? So you have 07 Y12 at 150 spacing, okay? While this one will also be 07 because they this is a square base, okay? It's a square base. So definitely the spacing is going to be the same. Um, sorry, not the spacing. Definitely the number of uh, reinforcement is going to be the same because it has the same spacing, is a square base, the same size of reinforcement, okay? So the next thing you do is to give a cross section of this particular base detail. This is actually your base detail. This is base one. Based on our design, you can see we specified all of them to be base one and all of them, they are column one, okay? So this, they all have one particular base, they all have one particular column, this one, column one, the same size of reinforcement at uh, 07, that's seven, Y12, uh, the bar mark 01 at 150 spacing. While this one is no longer going to be uh, 01, you can change, but I think uh, the bar mark will most likely be the same because um, in when you are trying to come up with your bar mark, most especially the essence is in bar bending schedule, okay? You are giving your reinforcement a name. So this reinforcement are uh, of the same uh, thickness, uh, the same length, and everything about this reinforcement is actually the same. They are spanning in the same span, the same diame diameter, everything about them is the same. So in that case, the bar mark is definitely going to be the same. But let's assume that from here now to this place is up to 1,500, assuming. So if you multiply 1,500, um, if you divide 1,500, divide it by 150, you are going to have 10. So if, for example, from here to here, assuming, assuming from here to here is 1,005, Sorry, I will explode this. Text edits. So let's say, for example, this is one five. You know, you have this to be 10 now. This is going to be 10. 10 of this, for example. Definitely, this bar mark is actually going to change to two because 
the size of the reinforcement here is definitely going to be longer than the size of the reinforcement that is spanning the other way. Uh, this one, this one is going to be, no, I think that should take effect here. Oops, from here to here. Sorry, that should be here rather. This is 10. This is two. Then this one is one. And then this is 07. Because here would definitely, the reinforcement here is going to be longer because from here to here is longer. So that means this length here is going to be longer than the length of the reinforcement that comes this way. So I believe you understand the logic. So all you need to do is to understand how this detailing are, are represented. So once you understand how this detailing are represented, that is all. It's just for you to actually uh, use the same logic for whatever kind of uh, base that is actually coming your way. You, have, you can have your base in a rectangular shape. You can have your base in a square shape. You can have your base in a uh, hexagonal shape. So whatever kind of shape that is your, your base is coming as, okay? So you understand how to represent your reinforcement, okay? So I'm going to take back all of this to the way it was before, because this design, based on our design, our base is actually a square base. So I was just trying to use that to explain to you why this bar mark is actually the same, okay? Then, the next thing you need now is the cross section of this base. You have to cut this base at a cross section. So I'm going to pick this. Like I said, I'm going to send you a sample of a structural design, like the one I'm using now, so that you can follow what I'm talking about. I'll move this. Then if you cut this, you need to understand cross-section very well. If you cut this, okay, uh, you are going to see this reinforcement showing as dot, dot, dot. While this one, you are going to see it's coming exactly the way it's coming right now, okay? Um, while this one will come straight, you are not going to see this shape that comes like an L. You are only going to see it as a dot like a point, 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 okay? So I'm going to show you that this is the cross, typical cross section of how this other one is going to look like. Sorry, I don't know what is wrong with me. I think it's becoming very slow. I'm going to rescale this and make it smaller. Okay. So if you look at this cross section, I have to share my screen this time around. So I have this base here from the plan view. If you look at this here, now, uh, the, this 50 here is the thickness of your blinding that you do. Then this 350, you know, uh, what we got there from our design, I think is 500, okay? Um, from our design reports, right? we got 500 it was 500 okay so there now you must have uh, impute your thickness of your blinding so that is why you must actually know what you are doing so we are using a thickness of blinding of 50 and then the thickness of uh, 
that uh, entire base, the depth is actually 500. So if we take out 50, let's say we have 450 now as the thickness of this base, based on what I have there, okay? So there's no need of you drawing all of this over and over again when you already have an existing drawing, you can just copy from that existing drawing and you paste. You can see now, if you cut this cross section here now, at cross section one one, when you cut this, okay? If you cut this, sorry, let me come here. If you cut this cross section here, this is what you are going to have. Now, this reinforcement that is like this, this one is what you have here. This is it here. While this other reinforcement here, please, if you want to talk to me, just send me a message on WhatsApp or else this thing will disconnect. I'm connecting with my phone. Fifty, 50 is not a concrete cover. I got your question. 50 is blinding, blinding. It's different from the uh, normal uh, concrete cover you are using. You have to blind before you do your base, okay? You have to blind, okay? On the ground, anytime you are doing anything on the ground, you blind, okay? So the blinding, you do before your base comes. Okay, the concrete cover you're using for the base, uh, I assume 25 to be my concrete cover. Okay. Sorry, my mouse is behaving. What is wrong? I try to. All right. So this thickness is the concrete cover here. That is concrete cover. You can see it's represented with something like a form of a concrete as I'm clicking on it. Okay. That's the, sorry, this is the blinding, not a concrete cover. This is a blinding, okay? Um, when you cut this reinforcement, this is actually what you are going to, when you cut this base, this is the cross section of this base, okay? So you can see that O1 here, okay? You know, all the reinforcements, we gave them the same name as O1, the bar mark, because I said the shapes are the same. So they have the same bar mark. Okay, so uh, this reinforcement, like I said, is this, while this one is what we have here. So all you need to do is just to count how many of this one do you have? So we have seven of this. This is seven of this reinforcement. This one is seven. You know, this one is also seven. The both reinforcement are seven, seven. They are spanning seven. So if this one is seven, you have to count this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? So all you need to do is to make this one seven in number. There is a tool they call uh, array. I believe array can help you arrange this reinforcement in the same spacing, in, in seven spacing, okay? You make them seven and in the same equal spacing. So because of my time, I'm not going to go through showing you this, but all you need to do is to make this reinforcement seven here. Let them be seven. I have one less than a minute. I'm ending this session right now. Okay. So if you count this, we have seven of this. 
And then that is exactly what we have. This is a typical cross section. This one is showing you a continuity sign of a column here. This is a column. This entire one that comes like this is the column, which is this one, okay? While this one down here is the cross section of the base, okay? 